again. Thanks for joining. Um, I know this video is a bit a little, little bit late. I had so much trouble with the recording. Um, I don't know. I did an update and then anyway, forget that. We're doing the recording now, so um, let me just get to it. All right. So I'm. This is gonna be uh, showing you how to install Git in Linux slash Unix like environments, right? So we have Linux sent. Um, uh, BD, B, OpenBSD or one of those BSD distribution or Solaris, any Unix-like environment, pretty much. Uh, this is going to show you how to install Linux. And so here I'm going to start with Ubuntu. As you can see, it says Ubuntu for me, but I'll show you why that doesn't matter in a minute. And so I'm going to open up my terminal and I'll check and see if um, Git is installed. And so Git is not installed. And in Ubuntu, if git is not installed, it's going to tell you, oh, you can run sudo app git install to install git. Now, um, if you're using Unix or Linux-like environment, I know you're tech-savvy enough to and brave to be going that route. And one of the things that happen in Unix slash Linux is um, things in that, some things are not as easy to install as you might find in Windows or Mac. One of the reasons that is is because um, there's so many variety of distribution. Even um, with Ubuntu here, the derivative of Ubuntu, like Education OS or whatever it's called, or Element OS, I think it is not Education. Element OS, um, they bunch out of one Mint, and then Ubuntu itself is derived from Debian, and the list goes on. And then you have um, your Red Hat based distribution. So you have Red Hat itself, CentOS, and Fedora, which are both the right from Red Hat and blah, blah, blah. Plus you have the source distribution like Gen 2. So it doesn't really matter. Uh, and I'll show you why. So I can go ahead and do this and install Git because it's telling me that it's inside the repository offered by my distribution. Now, what is a repository? A repository is just a, a place where um, the distribution or the people who build your Linux distribution store a number of software that you can install. Uh, packages, they store them as packages. Packages is just a description for all the dependencies and things that are provided by a particular set of software uh, or required to get something to run it. So this git package, if I do app cache show git. Now your thing, if you use an RPM based distribution like Red Hat, it's gonna be different. Um, or whatever package manager you use in for your distribution is gonna be different. But if I look, I can see that it says for this git package, is the name of it, package, it's uh, priority is optional, section is version control system, the size of it, who maintained it, who originated, what architecture, the versions, I could see it's version 1.9, da, da, da. It replaces Git core that is less than 1.7 or whatever, Git web that's less than 1.7. It provides Git completion and Git core, of course. It depends on all these other things. So that's the nice thing about a package is that it lists all the dependencies. So if you don't have all the dependencies already installed, when you go to install Git, it says, oh, I depend on this thing. I'm gonna try and go install these other packages. Now, of course, these packages also have their own distribution, um, require dependencies, sorry, not distribution, dependencies, and they're gonna end up in this tree of dependencies get installed if you don't have it installed. So for example, I can do glibc, for example. Oh, what was it called, libc? I can't remember, what was the dependency here? Uh, libc6, ah, libc6, libc6 as a package. And we could see it though, this package also has some dependencies. Uh, does it have dependent? It depends on libgcc1. So anyway, you can follow this rabbit hole all the way down to see until you get to a package that doesn't have a dependency. But chances are some of these things are already installed for me. So I could go ahead and say sudo app get install git, all right? and it, it installs it. And it prompts me for my password, I type it, and it goes ahead and, and install Git. And it's downloaded and you see it's, you know, it might prompt you for yes, to type you yes or something. Your package manager is have to install a number of dependencies. So mine is installed and now if I type Git, I can see that Git is installed, minus minus version. Now, one of the things you can do is, is you can go to the Git SCM website, git-scm.com, and there you'll see um, it's going to tell you that they have an even later version, most likely, than what your particular distribution is offering. Now, Ubuntu is offering, the latest version they're offering their repository is Git 1.9. Your distribution might order, offer 2.0 or 2.5 or whatever, right? It doesn't really matter. Or you may, your distribution might be a little bit behind and offer 1.7. 
I, th I don't think it matters. All those gets are going to be compatible with each other, and the things that we're going to be doing in Git, you don't need to have the latest one. So on the website, it's saying that oh, the latest is 2.5.1. If you wanted to install the latest, well, click here, and you're going to see, that's why I said it doesn't matter which distribution or which type of Linux you're using, because here they tell you how to install it. Here they said for Ubuntu slash Debian based distributions, use app get install, which is what I did. For Red Hat, like Fedora, CentOS, and um, CentOS, Red Hat, Fedora, use this, and Gen 2 use that, blah, blah, blah. And so you can see for other different type of Unix and Linux environment, you can install it. Once you install it, again, it's going to be the version of your particular repositories um, and their maintainers are offering, right? They consider whatever, good enough or something, or they've tested and so on. If you want a, a later version, what you can do, is go back to here and say source code. It take you to GitHub. Oh, we're not going to type a GitHub right now. You copy this link. Um, you know, this is literally everything in this tech box, but this makes it easy. Just click there and copy, or you could highlight it and copy. Go back to your command line after you install Git. And you type, and I'm going to make a directory. Um, and I'm going to say, I want to store stuff in some repository that's for Git stuff. And I'm going to say, git clone because i already installed that particular version of git and i'm gonna paste what i just copied and now this is gonna bring down the source code for that for the latest git which is that 2.5 that one version okay now when i was doing these videos for windows and mac the version on the website was actually 2.50 and i was able to download those packages and just install them all right so let's download it so i'm going to actually get and there's the git source and if you want to go ahead with the install, there's a file here called install, and you can read that, and it's going to tell you how to install. And I'm not going to go through it because I believe that's the beyond the scope of this video. It might ask us to install a number of dependencies for building and all that stuff, and it's going to be different for each distribution. I know this because um, I, I've done that sort of thing before. So trust me, if you want to go down that path, follow the installation, and for your particular distribution, it's going to help you and you, you should, if you're in Linux and Unix, you, you should be fairly competent to find how to do that stuff. All right. So now, um, Git is installed. We have Git installed. And so, um, I'm not going to go through the configuration. I just want to prove to you that it's installed. So I'll make directory I've done for all the other videos, projects, test, and, oh, I need to do minus P if I want to create all the parent directory and develop blah, blah, blah. And then so in this directory, I don't have anything. And I'm going to say like echo um, hello world. And I'll create that into a file called readme.md. And it doesn't really matter why I call that file that for now. And it's just a file. And then I can say git status. And it can say, oh, there's not even a repository. And I can say git init. And it's going to create a hidden directory for me, which is that git i know it's hidden because if i type ls i don't see it but if i type ls minus a it shows me a hidden directory right and now i can type git status and it says, oh this file is new i don't know it but you can use git add to add it and i'll do git add this readme file now i type git status again it says oh i know this file next thing you commit it i'm gonna commit the changes at a time when whatever the content of the file is when you just said add right i remember that i cached it away somewhere and I'll commit it when you say um, commit. And I can go ahead and try and commit. And as demonstrated in the other videos, it's going to fail. Minus M for our message. And I will say initial check in. And since Git knows which file I'm trying to commit because I already added, um, I just say check in. And it's telling me, hey, you know, I don't, I don't know who you are. And this makes sense because if I'm going to try and commit, and I might be sharing this project with other people who's going to, well, who's going to also work on it or look on it and want to blame me for something I did. <laughs> is uh, Git needs to associate all your commit with your username and email. And so that's what it's telling you to, to do here. I'm not going to continue any further because I'm going to do a video that's just have to, that focuses on configuration. And since the configuration is the same for um, Mac, Windows, and Linux, I'll just do one video to show you some of those configurations that I have used and I think will be helpful to you. And so that's why I want to do it in all one video outside of the installation. So this is install, and it's how to install Git in Linux. And um, I hope this helps you. Um, and come back and let's configure Git and then keep moving, okay? All right.
Take care. Bye.